Phillies and Gentacles, welcome to another edition of Pony Fan Fiction Theater. I'm your host, Nate. With me is... And your second co-host, um, Edward Blake. Yes. And we're, this is story is called Drag in Your Hooves. And there's a t it's a two-parter, but it's not it's an unfinished story. So once it's finished, I will continue the rest. For right now, I'm going to read part one. <clears throat> Let's begin. Oh, yeah, and you can read along if you want on the description. Let's begin. Ah, uh, come on, Twilight. Can I just have a little bit of time to myself? Spike kicked the stray, at the stray bottle at Twilight's lab. Annoyed, he had been working all day, organizing the purple unicorn's various potions, powders, and scrolls. He wasn't alone. He had met, spent most of the day of it as well. It was tiring, tedious work, though. We only have a little more to take care of, Spike. Twilight said in a motherly tone. We should be done within the next hour. She sighed as she moved the stack of vials aside to allow room for a different group of vials. Spike was a good dragon, if tiny, a bit lazy. She did feel a little bad for working him all day, but he was a young dragon, and it was important for him to learn the importance of hard work. But my bedtime's in an hour. Spike, I will not hear more of this complaining, Twilight said a bit sternly. I appreciate the work you've done very much. But we can't leave this job unfinished. We gotta do we got work to do tomorrow as well. But I'll let you sleep in it a bit. If you just help me finish this now, okay? Ugh, fine, Spike said. I mean to himself that he was getting some extra sleep was worth it. Good, Twilight said. Now do me a favor and move these flasks over here, and make sure to be careful. Twilight floated a handful of flasks over to Spike, and he took them into his arms. Of course, Spike said confidently. Careful is my little name. The stack was a bit tall, and the tiniest bit unsteady, but Spike wanted to get his job done fast, and despite what he turned said he had no interest in taking it slowly and carefully in a few hasty steps and spike found himself nearly falling over luckily twilight's magic steadied him in the stack of flasks just in time spike shot a sheepish look to twilight who raised an eyebrow at him um it's not my legal name spike said offering a weak smile i am not singing this song because it insults my intake <laughs> insults me Blah, oh, blah, yes, you just, you just my little the pony, video. blah 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 edit, intro. Edit in the video, so it'd be kind of like an episode. Yeah, I will. Phew, Spike exclaimed, exhausted. We're finally done. The baby dragon ached all over from the work, hard work, but it was more than a psych physic likely psychological, as moving things from one place to another wasn't anything he was used to doing. Can I go to bed now? Twilight smiled warmly. All right, Spike, she said. You can go to bed. Spike didn't need to hear any more. He made her mad dash towards the laboratory door. Wait! Twilight yelled, stopping him in his track. Ah, oh, what is it now? Spike said, dragging his feet as he walked back down the stairs. He looked up to see one more flask floating towards him. We forgot this one, Twilight said, as Spike reached out to take the flask. Just put this over in the middle shelf in the, of the flask section, and we're good to go. I'm on it, Spike exclaimed. She, he rushed towards the shelf, wanted to get done as fast as possible, so she could get to bed. Spike, you're going to explain, break something. Twilight shouted as she neared the shelf at the rapid pace. Oh, calm down, Twilight, Spike said, as he skidded to a halt just before reaching the shelf. I'm not going to break anything. Spike looked at it at Twilight and gave her a sly grin, knowing that she expected for him to crash into the shelf. In doing so, however, he failed to notice that he was quite, wasn't quite as close to the shelf as he thought. He released the flask, expecting to rest on the shelf. He was shocked when it burst open at his feet, covering him with an identified powder. Spike! Twilight shouted as the baby dragon coughed, sneezed, and generally freaked out. Oh no no oh no oh no oh no Spike cried, shaking to get tried tried to get the powder off. What was that that stuff? What's gonna happen to me? Calm down, Spike. Twilight sent floating a towel over into him. You're lucky that the powder you just spilled only affects ponies psychologically. Now get to bed before I decide to revoke your sleeping in rights for tomorrow. But are you sure I'll be okay? Spike asked, toweling off the last of the powder. I think I feel kind of funny. Are you a pony, Spike? Twilight asked, glaring at him. No, 
he responded. Then we will be fine. Twilight answered flatly. Now get to bed. I'll meet you upstairs after I finish making another batch of that powder. The baby dragon trudged up the steps. Under Twilight's disdainful eye, he continued to worry as he climbed into bed and was sure that something felt weird, even though he, he couldn't place his finger on exactly what it was. However, Twilight didn't know her stuff, and if she, she said it would only affect ponies, then that had to be the case. It wasn't long before Spike was fast asleep. The morning sun shone through the windows directly into Spike's face as he was waking up. His eyes opened. He opened his eyes briefly, and then squeezed them shut again to keep the offending sunlight away. This was the one bad thing about sleeping in. He hated waking up early with Twilight like he usually had to, but at least the sunlight wasn't so intense that early in the morning. The positives did outweigh the negatives. However, as he got on such a wonderful night's sleep that he nearly forgot about his mishap, mishap at the light lab last night. Spike yawned, starting to spur from his comfortable position. He touched a single hoof to his face, rubbing his f the sleep from his eyes. For some reason, when he got a good night's sleep, he still felt t tired for a while after waking up, but it was nothing a good stretch could have fixed. Spike rolled out of his bed and onto his hoofs. He stretched four legs first, and hind legs, and finally his wings. He felt the best of all. He loved stretching his wings. Wait. Oh, God. Strike, Spike reached his hand out in front of him. Only if it wasn't a hand anymore. He stared blankly at the purple hoof in front of him for a couple seconds. He took a few steps forward, very clumsily, as something about walking on two legs felt awkward now. He soon fell forward, landing on his hand, uh, hooves. On all fours, he slowly walked towards the nearest mirror. After seeing hooves where his hands used to be, he already expected what the sight he s saw when he uh, looked in the mirror. However, that didn't stop from being so surprising. Twilight! The purple uniform practically flew up at the stairs when he heard Spike shout her name. She had already been up and working and didn't like to be distracted from her work. But the urgency... But the sense of urgency in his voice was enough to take her away from it. She burst through the door to the room and see what the problem was. Spike, what's what? It wasn't physically possible for Twilight's jaw to hit the ground and still remain connected, but it was sure that it was making a fine effort to do so. In front of tw Twilight stood a purple cult with a green mane. She knew instantly it was if that it was Spike. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it! Spike cried, stomping his front hooves on the ground until his lack of confidence with his new body caused him to slip and fall on his face. Calm down, calm down, I can fix this. Twilight said in the pang, I just got up. She paused. In her own, in all of her studies, she had never come across something like this. She read the ponies being turned into dragons and ponies being turned into other ponies. And on one very personal occasion, ponies being turned into plants. Never had, never voiced that she had read of a dragon becoming a pony. Hurry, Twilight! She, Spike shouted. I can't take any more of this. I don't want to be a pony. Twilight paused and she glared at Spike. And what is exactly is wrong with being a pony? The purple unicorn asked. Spike gulped. Ah, oh, well, he stammered. And I, th and I happen to think you look cute as a little fool. Twilight said, a smirk crossing her face. And I had, and I have a half a mind to leave you like that if you're going to have that kind of attitude. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Spike said, his new pony ears folded, folding down. There's nothing wrong with being a pony. Now please find a way to change me back. Twilight couldn't help but chuckle a bit. She loved Spike, but he was so easy to manipulate sometimes. Okay, Spike, Twilight said. I'm going to check out my books and see if I can figure out how to change you back. You stay here not to try to get into any trouble, okay? Spike nodded vigorously. The purple unicorn turned into the exit to the room and looked back with a grin before she left. Oh, and are you feeling sick? Twilight asked. Uh, no, Spike said. Oh, I thought you were. She said, big, barely contained a laugh because you look like a small horse. Spike stared at her, confused. It's a joke, Twilight said, nearly falling over with laughter. Did you mean you look a little horse? Spike said, oh yes, that's it, Twilight said, I don't usually do jokes. Twilight trotted out of the room, still smiling, and Spike rolled his eyes. Part end of part one. That's the end of part one. Part two is coming soon.